Welcome to our next segment of our introduction to Austrian economics. This time we're going to be looking at we are all entrepreneurs and some of us are enterprisers. As I pointed out in an earlier talk, we in the, have an element in the human condition that is inescapable, and that is that our knowledge is imperfect and the future is uncertain. Human action in itself implies, as we saw, that knowledge is less than perfect. To choose from among alternatives means that the individual believes that he can influence the shape of things to come, that he could do nothing or he could take one course of action or another course of action different from the current state of affairs continuing as they are. Hence, the future is not predetermined. It is open to change, at least from man's perspective. This means that all human choice and decision-making has an element of the speculative to it, a judgment based upon imagined future possibilities that the individual sees as possible, but which may be possible to emerge or develop, or which may not. Now, Austrians such as Ludwig von Mises have argued that this means that inseparable from the human circumstance, from human action itself, is an entrepreneurial element. Every action undertaken by you and me is therefore entrepreneurial in the sense that we're speculating. What course of action should we undertake? How might we be able to influence the future? Why might that course of action be less prospectively attractive? And then when we take courses of action, we evaluate them after the fact. And sometimes we discover that they have not turned out the way we had hoped for. That means that each of us has the speculative entrepreneur in us in everything we do in little and great ways each and every day. Now, in the market economy, there is a specialized function to the meaning of the entrepreneur. He is the enterpriser who chooses to take on the task of imagining, planning, undertaking, and directing the production of goods and services until they are, the product is completed and offered to the consumers for their possible purchase. The enterprising entrepreneur as a result in the production activity is the bearer of uncertainty. Why uncertainty? Well, he contracts for the workers to be employed by him in the enterprise. They receive their salary week by week, month by month. He purchases raw materials, resources, component parts that are used in the manufacturing process. And as the production process is continuing, those people who sell him such resources and raw materials and parts receive their sums for services rendered. He borrows capital, perhaps, that is, other people's savings, when his own means of savings are not sufficient to undertake the task and bring it to fruition. But he contracts to pay it back with interest, and the lender is expecting to receive his promised payments on time. But the entrepreneur who oversees and guides and directs this through a process of time and has paid all of these people their contractual uh, obligations for services rendered, the entrepreneur has no certainty. He doesn't know whether the imagined consumers who he thinks will want the product that he's offering at possibly and hopefully prices that if they buy enough of it would recoup his monetary expenses will in fact at the end of the day want his product. If he has successfully anticipated the direction of markets and consumers, the profits may be his. His revenues may be greater than his outlays but it is also possible that he has misinterpreted what consumers want or failed to realize and appreciate that his competitive peaceful rivals have devised ways to make that mousetrap better and less expensive than his own and the market shares in the business go to them and he's left suffering a loss. Whether he remains an entrepreneur, either to grow or is pushed out of the market as an entrepreneur, with his enterprise is shrinking, shrinking until finally it goes out of business. That is determined by the market itself. But in all of this, his actions is speculative in an inescapable uncertainty. Now, what is it that the entrepreneur does in his speculative activities in a world surrounding him of uncertainty about outcomes and results? 
This has been de developed in a particular way by uh, a student of Mises, and that's Dr. Israel Kersner. Israel Kersner did his PhD under Ludwig von Mises at New York University, became a professor himself at that New York institution of higher learning, and devoted his professional career as an economist to developing, elaborating, extending, refining, first Mises's and then his own developed notion of the meaning, role, and significance of the entrepreneur in the market process. The essence of the entrepreneur in Israel Kersner's perspective is that he is the one who is alert. What does alertness mean? Kersner suggests that alertness means to be noticing something that others have either not seen or thought about. Alertness means thinking and seeing outside the box, outside of the known set of opportunities and routine ways of doing things. It is the process of discovering new knowledge and possibilities that no one has previously seen, imagined, or noticed. And to use that knowledge of the discovered possibilities by alertness to that which is around him that others have not seen. And to use them in ways, transform these ideas and these products and these resources into the finished forms that he then offers to the consumers and discovers whether his alertness and his actions on his basis were justified. He too can be wrong. What, is, what type of alertness does he mean? I think all of us have experienced the situation where there's a street that we've walked down a hundred, a thousand times. And the next time when, walking down the, when we're walking down the street, we look up and there's a billboard or a sign or some object. And we say, why did I never notice that before? It's been there all the time. But for some reason, in some way, it caught our attention. Now, that's, of course, the trivial or mundane way. The art of the entrepreneur is to sort of have his mental and psychological scanners out, to be searching the horizon that something will get his attention that others have missed or not seen or thought about, that when he sees it, something clicks in his mind and tells him that is a new product that consumers might want. That is a use of a thing that I see as a resource that can go into the manufacture of something to make a better product. This is a way of combining resources or organizing things in a way that can be better, better to efficiently get it done and minimize my expenses to be able to make it for less so I can offer to sell it for less and then hopefully make a profit if consumers in fact desire it. It is that pursuit of profit through the act and the action of alertness that Kersner has seen in his development of Mises's view of the entrepreneur as the person who organizes production, who imagines things and sees things that is the key to the entrepreneurial process. One other element to, to this is that at the end of the day, Mises argued, and I'll talk about this a little bit further uh, at a future point, is that profit and loss is not something that is out there but it is something that begins and ends in the mind of the enterprising entrepreneur. He, in fact, creates his opportunities. He doesn't just take what others see out there or could be out there. Now, there's one other element to entrepreneurship that I'd like to take a little bit of time to uh, bring out as well. And this is by an individual who was not in the narrow sense a member of the Austrian school, though he was in fact trained in the Austrian tradition in the old Vienna in the years before the First World War, but nonetheless developed ideas of entrepreneurship that many Austrians have viewed as if not the same, at least parallel in some ways complementary to their own vision. And that is the ideas of Joseph A. Schumpeter. Joseph Schumpeter, in a famous book called The Theory of Economic Development, published in the early part of the 20th century, argued that the essence of competition is the idea of the market as a dynamic process in which the innovative entrepreneur introduces the new, the better, the improved products, as well as devising new methods of production that otherwise have not been applied. He argued that to understand this competitive process of what he came to call creative destruction, 
the creative and the new that replaces the old and the previously used. It is necessary to take a longer historical perspective of the market as a dynamic process of entrepreneurial rivalry and improvement in and through time. The significance of his perspective in thinking of entrepreneurship in this way is that he asked us to challenge many of the typical models that the student will find in sort of what is called the mainstream microeconomic textbook, the models of perfect competition, of monopoly. For Schumpeter and the Austrians, these models are stati static images and frozen pictures that tell us little about the circumstances that came before the frozen picture in the perfect competition or monopoly graph on the economics textbook page, or what will follow from it. It is viewing the economic process as a never-ending and dynamic motion picture that flows from frame to frame and is the beginning of the next that follows and is itself building upon what had preceded. To be narrowly confined to these static diagram-type models is to miss the essence of what the rivalrous and innovative and changing market order is about. It's for this reason that Schumpeter referred to this and his famous words in his 1942 book, Capitalism, Socialism, Democracy, what he called the process of creative destruction, the perennial gales of creative destruction, which in his view was the essence of capitalism. That capitalism is in its core a dynamic, changing, improving circumstance because it creates incentives and opportunities to let loose the entrepreneur's mind to think about the new and the different and have the motive and opportunity to try to bring it about. And that enables us to look, look through a, a, a panorama and a horizon of historical time and to see how much life has been transformed and changed and improved from 100 years ago, from 50 years ago, from 20 years ago, from just five years ago, that has only been made possible because of the rivalrous dynamism of the innovative entrepreneur that in its Austrian version is simultaneously focusing on the horizon to capture the new through alertness to the possibilities. This is a view of competition different than is often taught in the mainstream of economics. But for the Austrians, this is the heart of the economic process. Mises once said that, that, that the prime mover of the market is not per se the consumer, not per se the resource owner or the worker. It is he who has the idea of the possible and the imaginable and the potentially profitable, who sets it in motion by bringing the resources and the factors of production together, guided by a plan, an imagining, a vision of what could be, and completed through time and offered to others in the hope of profit, and to do so most effectively with the desire to avoid loss. But at the end of the day, it is the consumers who decide who profits and who loses. That is the test of the market through its peaceful process of cooperative competition. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.